In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called concatenated words. So given an array of strings, words, no, without duplicates, uh, return all the concatenated words in a given list of words. So let's say we have a string array of words, right? So list of words, and we want to find all the concatenated words in that list. And basically a concatenated words or a concatenated word is defined as a string that's comprised uh, entirely of at least two shorter words that are in the given array, right? So you can see here, we have a simple example here. If I have a words array, so cat, dog, right? Cat, dog. In this case, the only concatenated word in this list of array is cat, dog, because you can see I can split the cat, dog, right? Into two words. I can split into cat and I can also split in, and then I have a dog and a cat, right? And dog and a cat are contained in the list of the array. So in this case, this word right here is a concatenated word, right? So it's concatenated from the list of, of the words, except the current item or except the current word itself. Let's look at another example. So let's say we have this example right here, right? So in this case, you can see I have cats. I, I also have cats, right? A list of words, and then this is the output. So what we do is we iterate each and every single word. We check to see if this is a concatenated word, right? So is this a concatenated word or let's say concat word, right? Let's just call it concat word. Is this concat word? In this case, it's not. So we will move to the next word, right? In this case, cats. So is this concat word? In this case, it's not, right? This can this word, if we split it at least two shorter words, these shorter words does not contain in the list of strings or list of words. So we move on to the next where in this case, cats, dog, cats, right? So you can see that cats, dog, cats, uh, we can be able to split into here, split here. You can see cats is contained. Dog is also contained in here, right? So you can see dog is here, cats is here, right? So in this case, this is a concat word. So we add it onto the output array or output list. So then we move on to dog. In this case, dog, is not a concat word because I cannot split at least two, right? If I split at least two, there's no, it doesn't contain any words. So cat, dog, cat, dog, in this case it does. If I split here, you can see dog, cats, dog, they both contain in the words list, right? So I add it onto the, the output array. Okay, so then I move on to the next word. In this case, this word is not, and then basically this word is not either. And then this word is because you can see here I have rats, right? I can split here, here, and here, right? So rats, cat, dog, cats, right? So they're all contained in the words array. If I split them into at least two shorter words, uh, they're all from the given array, right? Given strain arrays. So in this case, um, you can see this is basically how we solve the problem, right? We basically iterate each and every single word. And then we're basically just going to call it some kind of function to validate if this word can be able to, it or is a concatenate word, right? In this case, how can we be able to solve this problem? So, so to solve this problem, um, we basically just go and iterate each and every single word. And uh, we, for each and every single word, we check to see if it's a concatenated word, right? And how can we do this? How can we check to see if a word is concatenated? Well, earlier this year, I did a question. Uh, it's called word break. So this question is very similar to this question. Basically, we're given a string and we're given a list of string, which is basically a word dictionary. And we want to see if we can be able to split the word into multiple segmentations, right? Like, uh, and then we want to see if those subwords or shorter words are contained in the word dictionary. So let me give you an example, right? So let's say we have like Lee code, for example. Uh, I can split it. And then if the dictionary is this, right, if this is our dictionary and this is our string, I can split the word into two, right? I can split the word to half. And those smaller words, they all contain in the dictionary. So therefore, we are returning true because lead code can be segmented as lead and code, right? And then now let's say we have like apple, pen, apple, right? So you can see the word dictionary is apple and pen. We can use the, the words in the dictionary multiple times. So I can split this half right? This half and then this half, right? So you can see I have three words and those three words, they're all contained in the word dictionary. So in this case, um, to solve this problem, right? Let's talk about the brute force approach first. As, as you can see here, like, let's say we have, this is our dictionary, this is our string, right? Uh, the brute force approach 
is basically just going to be exponential. And the reason why it's exponential here is because you can see here, it takes this word, right? We basically see, okay, this is lead and code. So let's say I take the first word. Does it contain a dictionary? If In this case, it doesn't, right? And then I check to see if this is contain a dictionary. And I check if this contain a dictionary. L-E-E, -E, does it contain a dictionary? In this case, it doesn't. And I check to see if L-E-E-T does contain a dictionary. In this case, it does. Okay, so in this case, I just call this function, right? I check the remaining substring if this can contain a dictionary, right? So in this case, I, I do a DFS, right? I go down this path. I check to see if COD, right? In this case, you can see COD. The COD contain a dictionary. In this case, uh, C does contain a dictionary, right? So we know that. Oh, sorry, C doesn't contain a dictionary. COD doesn't. COD doesn't CODE does, right? So in this case, we know that it does. So in this case, we are going to call a DFS function for empty string. For empty string, we know that it's gonna be true uh, because we know that if the left substring is true, right? If left substring contained a dictionary, this is true, right? Because there's nothing on the right, so we have we don't have to check anything, so we can just return true. So therefore, at this position is true. So you can see that um, after we iterate to after we backtrack to here right in this case lead i also have probably have to check lead lead and c right lead and c or or l e e t c right you can see l e t c i have ode i have to do a dfs function to ode and you can see that ode is already computed before so in this case what we can do is we can basically use dynamic programming to cache this right we can say that oh if this o e o ode already being uh computed before we can basically um, cache that and then return the pre-computed value, right? So that's where it, where DP comes in, right? So let's talk about how we can be able to optimize using DP. Solve this problem. Um, this is the core logic of our code, right? So you can see here, um, basically, we're going to take this string array, right? And then we convert it into a hash set, right? Because in this case, if I want to see if that word contains in the dictionary, um, I don't want to iterate through the words to find it. I can basically use a set to find it, right? Which give us a constant time complexity. And I have a list of string, which, which is the result list that we're going to return at the end. Um, and then in this case, you can see I iterate each and every single word. And this basically, you can see, you can tell this will give us a time complexity of M, right? We iterate through each and every single word. And then for each and every single iteration, because we want to avoid to uh, check to see if the current word exists in the dictionary, right? If current word exists in the dictionary, then we know that, you know, we, we at least need to have two words um, that contains in the dictionary, right? So, uh, yeah, we want to break the word, current word down to smaller, two sm at least two smaller words. So in this case, we cannot count the current word. So we remove the current word and then we do our DFS, right? So in this case, we, we have our in and then we have our cache array. You can see this is our Boolean, right? 2D array, Boolean array. And then you can see here, I first check to see if word.length does not equal to zero. If it's an empty string, right? You can see the question that says that there could be a situation where it, it is an empty string, right? If it's an empty string, um, then I don't want to do our DFS, right? Um, and then what I'll do is that I basically check to see if this word can be concatenated. If it can, if it can be concatenated, then I'll just add the word onto the result list, and at the end we will return the result list, right? So inside of this it is concat function, we, it takes a start and the end, and then the character array. So the start is bigger than the end. Uh, we just return true, right? If in this case, if there's just empty string, right? Then we just return true. And then what we do is that we first check to see if it's already been cached before. If it's already been cached, we return the cache value. And then we, you can see here, I iterate through the each and every single character I add for, well, in this case, I initially set it to false, right? And in this case, you can see I first add the current character onto it, start from the start to the end, right? And I basically check to see if this substring, right? The left substring that we have, is it contained in the dictionary? If it does, we're gonna do a DFS to see if the remaining substring, right? Just like this question right here, does, does the current word contain the dictionary. In this case, it does. Okay, then we're gonna do a DFS for the remaining substring. So, and then what we do is that if the remaining substring returns true, okay, it will change this. If it does, if it returns false, then we'll assign it false, right? And then let's say if the current position is true, then we will just break because we found the two, right? If we found the two, uh, you know, if we found the two, at least two substrings or a, if, if the current position, right, it, is can be able to concatenate, then we can just return true, right? We don't have to continue iterate to the next word or something, right? 
So in this case, what we do is we just break and we just return the result. If not, we just continue, right? But you can see that there's there's always a way to improve or optimize. You can see we don't really need the uh, 2D array because you can see the end didn't really change much, right? So you can see I, if I highlight the red or, or end, you can see the end didn't really change much. It's basically always going to be end, right? Like the word, you can see if, if I want to go from like, for example, lead code, right? It's always this, this, this. Oh, I found lead in there. Okay, so I start from here, maybe like I'll from here, 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 here. It's always from the current start always to the end. End is never changed. So what we can do is that we can basically just say, let's just keep it a one directional array, right? Just 1D uh, for the uh, Boolean uh, cache array. And then we basically uh, use the same logic. And then we can just say, hey, this is the end. N is equal to array.life minus one. So we don't have to carry that around. And we also don't need another uh, or basically 2D array, we can just have one directional array. And we basically say that at this position, right? For example, at this position, C, right? Or index in zero, one, two, three, four, in this case, index four, this index four is, uh, can be concatenated, right? Is, is if index four to the end can be concatenated and we can just, uh, you know, save the result, right? So you can see, I basically have this and then uh, one, and I just have like just one directional array. So initially it's false, right? So cache from start to the end, right? At this position is false. And then I just say, do a, basically do a DFS for uh, all valid path, right? And then at the end, I'll just return cache as start pretty much, right? So you can see this is basically how we solve the problem. But um, let's take a look at the uh, time complexity here. So the time complexity, uh, in my opinion, is basically just gonna be big O of n square uh, n uh, power three times m. We talked about what's m already. M is basically a list of words, right? We basically iterate through all the words that we have in words array. But why there is why there is three to the power of n? Well, three to the power of n. We know that this is basically uh, the time complexity for this, right? Is going to be n squared because you can see here for each and every single word. Uh, we basically have to, uh, for each and every single character, we basically could have to traverse the word multiple times, right? But the thing is, you, we, we also might forget, it's like, for example, like sb.toString, right? We, if we want to convert the current substring, right, the left substring into a string, we, we will have a linear time complexity here, right? So that's why we have n squared, right? n squared times n, right? n is basically this function right here, converting the uh, the, the substring to a, to, to a string. And then n square here is because you can see here, we're basically just going to say for each and every single character, right? Like for each and every single character from the start to the end, I can do a DFS function to traverse the entire string. And I come back, the next word, traverse the, uh, traverse the DFS path, right? Traverse the entire string and come back, right? The worst case scenario is that we have each and every single character contained in the dictionary. So we have to do a DFS come back, DFS, come back, DFS, come back. So it could be like just a, you know, uh, nested for loop kind of thing, right? So that's why we have a time complexity of uh, n to the power three times m, right? So there you have it. Thank you for watching.